Hello, everyone. It's Martha McCabe. I'd like to welcome you to Team Canada Champion Chats. I'm thrilled to have you all here tuning in today. I'll introduce myself. I'm Martha McCabe, a two-time Olympian in the sport of swimming. I competed in London 2012 and at the Rio 2016 Games. My event was the 200-meter breaststroke. That's this one. And I'm a world championship medalist, a Pan Am Games medalist, uh, which was a really exciting race because I got to race in Canada for Canada. And I was a student athlete through most of my swim career, graduating with a master's degree in entrepreneurship and innovation. For the next 45 minutes, we will be talking about perseverance, hearing from our awesome panel of Team Canada Olympians that just competed in Beijing and some Team Canada Paralympians that are about to go off to compete. And we also want to hear how you, the viewers, are enjoying the chat. So don't forget to share with us by submitting your questions and comments in the comment box in the Team Canada Champion Chat YouTube channel. So we have an exciting group of athletes with us today from parts of Turtle Island, also known as Canada. Today, I'm joining this chat from Toronto, Ontario, the traditional territories of the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabek, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, the Wandat peoples. It's so important that we recognize the land because without it, where can we practice sport? Without water, we can't swim or paddle or dive. And without the earth, where would we skate or ski or slide? At Team Canada Champion Chats, we love to challenge our viewers. So here is our challenge for today. Reflect on what you can do to demonstrate your gratitude to have access to this incredible land, whether it's by learning about the indigenous people that first called Turtle Island home or the origins of sport like lacrosse and canoe. Start by thinking, how have you used this land this past winter? and Think about what you can do to help preserve these lands for generations to come. So now let's go over to meet our incredible athlete panel that we have with us today. Let's start with you, Jocelyn. Hi, everyone. My name's Jocelyn LaRock. Um, I play hockey. Uh, fortunately enough, I was at the 2022 Olympics in Beijing, um, and I also participated in the 2014 and the 2018 Games. So really happy to be here. Thanks, Jocelyn. Let's go over to you, Tyler. Hello, I'm Tyler Turner. I'm a Canadian Paris snowboarder. I race in snowboard cross and bank slalom. And I'm about to go to my first Olympics ever. So I'm really excited for this experience. And it's going to be pretty cool, pretty new. And um, yeah, super excited. Awesome. Great to have you, Tyler. How about you, Keegan? Hey, everyone. I'm Keegan Messing. I'm a figure skater. I participated in the 2018 Winter Games and the 2022 Winter Games. And uh, honestly, it is just such an honor to be able to represent Canada on the Olympic stage. Wow, yes. Welcome, Keegan. And last but not least, we have Fred. Hi everyone, I'm Frédéric Turgeon and uh, I participated in uh, the Paralympics back in uh, 2018 and I'll be on my way to my second Paralympics in Beijing uh, in two days. Amazing, very exciting and a big thank you to all of our athletes joining us here today. Let's get into today's topic, perseverance. Ask any athlete on the panel today and they will tell you about all the difficult situations, injuries, disappointments, and frustrations they've had and had to endure to get to the Beijing 22, 2022 Games. And in spite of endless challenges on the road to the Games, they have found a way to keep going and to not give up. This is perseverance. Life can throw some difficult things our way and we all need to have perseverance. So today we will chat with our athlete panel and hear their stories of perseverance that hopefully will inspire you to look at the challenges you face in a different way. 
We have all experienced challenges over the past two years with COVID-19. Rules have restricted our movement, forced us to wear masks, limited our sports and activities, and canceled some of the events we enjoy, which has obviously been a difficult time for everyone. A time where perseverance has been even more important than normal. I'd love to hear from the Olympians on the panel about a proud moment of perseverance they demonstrated during the games. From these experiences, do you have any advice for someone going through a challenging situation? For example, the Paralympians who are about to go off to the game soon or for classrooms listening in? Jocelyn, I'll turn to you. Thank you. Um, you know, like what you said, um, COVID has been challenging for all of us in so many different ways. Um, and we knew, you know, prior to the Olympics, if we got COVID, uh, we'd most likely not be able to go to the Olympics. And if we got COVID, you know, throughout the Olympics, we'd get removed from competing and go into an isolation hotel. So I found myself for, you know, months really thinking about COVID a lot. Um, just constantly thinking about, you know, do I have COVID? Um, and luckily, you know, we, we had a team meeting about it. And the emphasis was focusing on what you can control. And that really resonated with me. So like, instead of thinking, do I have COVID? I focused on the things, you know, that were it within my control. Um, so like keeping safe distances from people, washing my hands often, um, things like that. So instead of thinking, you know, do I have COVID? I focused on staying safe, as safe as possible. And, you know, this concept of focusing on what you can control versus, you know, factors that are outside of your control is really important in, in all areas of life. And there's so many things in our life that we can't directly control. Um, things like, you know, maybe a hard test coming up, uh, maybe making or not making a sports team, um, and so many others. And, you know, there's three things in life that you can always control. Um, and that's your attitude, your effort and your actions. Um, and things that are outside of our control, you know, happen all the time. Uh, but our attitude really, you know, it, it definitely affects, um, affects us positively or negatively. And, um, you know, I always try to, do, you know, try my best to see the positive in things. And again, just focus on what you can control. Um, and that definitely helps me, you know, throughout tough times, uh, particularly COVID, but also all, all aspects of my life. Wow. Well said. And how about Keegan? Over to you. Wow, Jocelyn, that was very well said and uh, pretty well on point with what I was going to say. You know, <laughs> uh, controlling what you can control uh, or focusing on what you can control is such a huge part of uh, of sport, of life, of just um, being the best person you can be. It's if you start focusing on the things you can't control, uh, the problem that you're trying to solve just gets that much bigger. You break up your problem into much smaller, easier um, pieces, then you can solve one problem at a time. And hopefully, if you solve enough problems, you can end up where you're going. My story uh, was very similar to Jocelyn's in the way of. Uh, we were focusing on COVID a lot. Uh, I won my very first national title this year. And when I came home, I had two weeks between the nationals and the Olympics. And I didn't even go home to see my parents uh, for congratulations to see them, to be happy and to share the moment. Uh, I had my 30th birthday party and all I um, shared it with was my immediate family, my wife and my son. So when I hopped on a flight with a neg negative COVID test to Vancouver. I got the random COVID test in Vancouver because uh, I got the random. And uh, then the next day I popped a positive COVID test um, right before the games. It was, um, it was devastating. It was such a, a hard hit. And, um, you know, it's just like, it was exactly that. It was like, I did everything in my power to stay as safe as I could, but I still lost the COVID lottery, um, which caused me to miss the team event. Uh, but honestly, I focused on staying positive, uh, focusing on the end goal, which was to compete at the, um, the singles event. And, you know, luck was on my side. And because I was able to keep my 
mental strength throughout this whole event. I was able to show up and with 28, uh, within 28 hours of landing in Beijing, I was already competing on the ice. One of my best short programs of the year. So, um, you know, it's, uh, life's going to throw you guys curveballs, but you know, if you can keep a strong attitude, um, that's just really one of the big battles, uh, to really uh, succeed. Yeah, and watching that story unfold from Canada, Keegan was incredibly inspiring. So congratulations to you. And thank you both for sharing those wonderful experiences. Perseverance is a life skill that can be best developed through having a growth mindset, which is believing that you have the potential to grow and learn through dedication and hard work. Growth mindset includes perseverance and resilience, all of which are fundamental to setting and achieving big goals, whether on the field, on the ice, in the classroom, or just in life in general. So let's go to Fred and Tyler now. How have you used a growth mindset to set big goals for yourself during the upcoming games? Fred, do you want to start? I'll let Tyler start. I'm very curious on what he says, actually. <laughs> Well, put the pressure on, um, you know, uh, growth mindset. That's an interesting one for me because I've had a pretty crazy four years. Um, I lost two legs in an accident. So uh, the growth mindset has been a long process for me. And uh, I, I hit a lot of dead ends. And that's when you really have to dig into that growth mindset and, um, you know, see that there's <clears throat> more if you just keep pushing forward and, and um I really would find myself not wanting to keep going. So I had to, I had to find that, you know, dig deeper and find that perseverance to keep pushing forward, which got me to a point where I was able to train at a level to um, put myself in a position to go to the Paralympics, which uh, four years later, that growth mindset has helped me get to this point and um, just continue pushing forward. Yeah. Unbelievable. And I'll go to you now, Fred. <laughs> Um, yeah, as it is for me, my perseverance, I think in the last four years definitely uh, showed um, after the 2018 games, a couple of months later, um, my dad unfortunately passed away in the middle of the night. So um, luckily, I just got back from like a trip in St. Moritz in Switzerland. And he picked me up at the airport. And I got to spend that last night with him talking about skiing, which was amazing. And um, he had this true passion for it and loved watching me kind of, uh, you know, develop in the sport and really achieve goals. And he was pretty much my number one fan. And um, so he passed in December of 2018. Um, and that was two weeks before I won my first World Cup. Um, two days in a row, actually, I won gold. Um, so I definitely kind of push myself to um, ski race and keep on going for my dad, mostly because I know how much passion he had for the sport. So um, for me, resilience kind of comes from um, connections that I have with everyone else and uh, with nature too. I find myself kind of being uh, sometimes sad and then I uh, look around, you know, at the world and kind of uh, find some sort of a beautiful like vibe to it. And that's when I really connect with uh, my sport because I'm surrounded by mountains and it's beautiful. So I feel very lucky. And that's where I find all of this motivation that just keeps on going. Uh, yeah, for now, I think it's my third year since my dad passed away. So everything kind of just motivates me to push myself and continue to ski race for my dad, but it's definitely hard to, uh, you know, kind of just push all those emotions or sadness on the side and turn it into some sort of joy. So I definitely kind of make the switch of, I'm sad that my dad passed away, but I'm going to turn it into, I'm happy to be able to ski um, for him in mind. Like I always think of him and I find it beautiful to just, you know, push myself and uh, kind of honor him in that way. Wow, both incredible displays of using perseverance and, and setting goals and having that growth mindset um, to be the best that you can be. I'd, I'd like to go to a little challenge for our viewers listening in. Um, 
it, maybe you can each name two different strategy strategies that have helped you overcome obstacles on your path to reaching goals. You can let us know in the comment box. And maybe before we go to some of these uh, other questions, I can turn to Jocelyn, who can maybe share a few strategies that have uh, helped you to, you know, be resilient and, and, and persevere through big challenges in your life in sport and out. Yeah, definitely. I mean, um, I'd say the major ones, um, I mean, I already said it, but focusing on what you can control. I mean, I, I, I try to always use that in every aspect of my life, whether that's sport, uh, whether that's my career, uh, really anything. Um, and then also like staying in the moment. Um, you know, it's, it's very common to, you know, focus on the past, uh, maybe you could have done things differently um, or focus on the future, like what's, you know, to come and what's ahead and maybe anticipating um, what's in your future. But it's really, really important to like be in the now, be in the moment and then, you know, from there, focus on what you can control. So those are things that, you know, I use daily in my life um, and especially in sport. Yeah. And, and staying in the moment and breaking down these big goals into small little steps is so critical. And I'd love to hear from you, Keegan, on, you know, how you use that approach maybe when you're out doing a performance um, and skating. How do you break that big, huge performance down? Do you approach it in, you know, a little step-by-step -step sequence to kind of get yourself through uh, that big ultimate goal and dream that you have? Can you share that a little bit with us on that? Yes, of course. Uh, and like, as you said, you know, um, it's a, it's a big chunk of performance. Uh, you know, you, you have seven jumping elements, three spins and, uh, two footwork sequences. It's a four minute program, which is kind of like a sprint, honestly. Uh, and so to break something that complex, that, uh, intimidating down, uh, takes a, a lot of work and it's a, it's a really big struggle, but you know, it's, um, just like anything in life, um, the bigger the problem, the more time it takes of preparation to go into it. So we spend really the whole year building up to um, the final competitions uh, like Olympics and Worlds. I even have Worlds in a couple of weeks after this, but we train five days a week. We run programs over and over and over and over again so that I don't have to think. So that when I go out onto the ice and stuff isn't lining up the way I want it to, I can revert back and focus on my training. And be like, no, no, I'm like, yeah, I'm not landing the stuff right now. But you know what? I've trained for this. I'm ready. I can go ahead and I can do this. A good example of this earlier this year, I had probably the worst warm up of my career uh, in Finland. And I think I only rotated two jumps on the warm up. But I got off the ice. I was skating last. So I had about 40 minutes off the ice. And I just got off the ice and I started running sprints and I started making sure that my body was completely ready to go out. And I was like, you know what? I'm ready for this. I trained my butt off to get here. I'm ready. Yeah, the six minute warm up didn't go my way, but you know what? I'm ready. And I went out there and I skated a very decent program for myself. And uh, so it's really, it's persevere, control what you can uh, and focus on the good things. Uh, I like the same saying, happy go lucky. You know, it's if you can focus on the happy, if you can focus on the positive side, it can make some difficult decisions that much easier to make. If you start dreading on the bad, you know, it's like, man, I'm falling all over the, over the place. I, I can't feel my legs. I can't do this. I can't, I can't, I can't. That's all you think about. It's all that gets into your head. So if you can push the negative side, if you can be a big enough person for yourself to trust in yourself, to trust in the training, trust in the work, you can really accomplish anything that you put your mind to. Yeah, so it's it's sounding like everyone can relate to the idea of, you know, having a good attitude at, you know, no matter what is in front of you is, is really critical. I'd love to hear from Tyler and Fred on this a little more. You know, as Olympians, do you have self-doubt at times? Do you doubt yourself in, you know, moments when you're getting ready for a competition or in training or in day-to-day in, in -day life sometimes? And if so, what do you do to kind of get through that? Do you have specific strategies you might use? Um, I can start with you, Tyler. Yeah, you know, um, self-doubt, I guess, is one of the things I would say I, I struggle with. And um, 
it's something that I've been working on this season to uh, overcome and so that my performance can be a, a little bit better. And, um, you know, they were speaking about it earlier that to practice, 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 so that this stuff becomes autonomous, so that you're not thinking about it in the moment. And I find one of the, the things that really caused the self, self-doubt for me is if I'm just about to go up to the start gate and I'm still running through, how am I going to do this? What am I going to do? I, that's where I really start to doubt myself. So what I've really worked on this season is to practice so much that it is, it's autonomous. You don't have to think about it anymore. And about 10 minutes before my race, um, I just stop thinking about it. And I, I think about something else. I think about surfing. I think about just having fun and try not to work myself into that place where I am feeling the self doubt. So that when I get into the gate, um, I just go do exactly what I know how to do and what I've been practicing so much for you know years now. And uh, that's my trick to, that I've been using this season, especially to overcome the self doubt that I feel. Amazing. And Fred, Fred, would you like to share a few of your strategies as well? Yeah, actually, same as uh, as Tyler here. I'm also struggling a lot this year with self doubt. Um, sometimes I've shown like I've shown up to races without even feeling prepared for uh, the event that I was competing in, and uh, I kind of put a lot of pressure on myself to compete good because I've done it in the past. So I feel like I can do it again, and that's when my mind just starts running and running and I can't stop almost. It's like a little hamster. Um, So what I usually do when that happens is I kind of just sit down and meditate. Uh, I can be in the start literally, and I will uh, clip out of my ski and, you know, just start focusing on anything else but that. So the fun that I'm having and like, usually I kind of just do a little ball of snow And I just think of that little ball of snow and I look at it, I look at the shape. I, I kind of just try to take my mind off of everything that feels so overwhelming at times. So that's the only way I can really uh, disconnect from everything that seems huge in front of me. And uh, it works really well. um, But I need to remind myself to do it whenever it happens. And whenever I actually am like super calm and confident, that's where I perform at my best because that's when I'm having the most fun. So as soon as the fun is there, that's when, uh, you know, things start going very well um, in general for me. Wow. Great strategies. I hope everyone listening and watching is, you know, writing this all down because uh, these are fantastic strategies that we can all use in our life, right? What a great grounding strategy, picking up the snow and just focusing on the snow and not that big, huge goal, the big, huge dream or the challenge at hand, just kind of grounding ourselves in where we are and what we're doing. I think we've got a ton of different uh, strategies that have been sent in from from schools. You can see them up here on the screen. Having positive self-talk is a a strategy that has been coming in, which you've heard the Olympians speak about too. The power of yet strategy of having poems and quotes um so i think yeah having some meanings that you can kind of touch on thinking about the good side of things and not the bad side that might happen which is uh what you heard the olympians speaking about as well don't say you can't look what one can become just from believing never say never never say never i think we can all relate to that one as well Um, So some fantastic strategies shared by our viewers. Keep those comments coming in. Um, We also have received a ton of questions for our athletes today from Canadian classroom viewers across the country. So let's answer a couple of these. Uh, We have a question from Ms. Farah Ahmad's grade one and two students from Portland Estates Elementary School in Nova Scotia. So the question for Jocelyn here is the class is wondering if you have any tips for the class, because sometimes they get distracted in class. Jocelyn. 
Uh, that's a great question. And uh, honestly, I, <laughs> I had the same issue when I was in school too. I would get distracted quite a bit. Um, a strategy that I've used um, and that I, I still use today when I'm in, you know, maybe meetings or uh, different things that I, you know, could get distracted is I would say a word and I chose the word moment. And I would say that to myself, and I still do, uh, when I get distracted. And then that kind of brings me back to being in that like current present moment. So I, I chose the word moment. So it reminds me to stay in the moment. And then it helps me refocus to where I am to, you know, so my mind isn't wandering anymore. So, um, you know, maybe try, you could use the same word as me. You can try a different word, but a trigger so that when you are maybe your mind's wandering off somewhere else, that it can bring you back um, to the present moment. Amazing. And, and we can see the similarities between that strategy and Fred's strategy with the snow. Uh, yep. Trying to ground yourself, bring yourself back to that present moment and refocus. Uh, whether you're, uh, you know, in a classroom uh, or an Olympian at the start gate of a competition, these are, you know, strategies we can all use. Um, I'll, I'll go to the next question here. Uh, it's from Miss Thompson's grade seven class from Westwood School in Manitoba for you, Tyler. Their question is, how do you balance your time with training and spending time with friends and family? Uh, well, hello to Miss Thompson's grade seven class. That's an <laughs> awesome question. Um, oh man, how do I balance my time with training and friends and family? And, uh, that's a tough one. We all know that uh, we may be trained too much and uh, a lot of our time and energy goes into training and we, we, our goal is to be the best. So we, you know, a lot of us get stuck on just practice, practice, practice and training. Um, I like to do my best to try and get away from that all. It, it can, it can really wear on you if you don't give yourself time away from it. So friends and family obviously are a great escape and, I like to find other activities. So that gives me an opportunity to do it with friends and family and, and, you know, things like for me, I have fun mountain biking or surfing or stuff like that. And that's an opportunity for me to, um, you know, invite my friends and go do something different than snowboarding. I, I struggle and I, I'm not sure if this goes with the other athletes here, but uh, to go snowboarding with friends and family isn't as enjoyable for me because I immediately snap into training mode. And so to get away from my sport specifically or whatever it is you do and, and go do something else where we don't have to think about snowboarding and, and, you know, trying to get to that top level. And um, yeah, so just some different activities and that allows me to, to connect with them a little more and, and we can just enjoy it together. Great ideas there. And we have another question here from, LSSD virtual school in Saskatchewan for you, Keegan. Their question is, how much does the support of Canadians help motivate you? We are proud of our Canadian athletes. Competing in the 2022 Olympic Games. Here's a question that our grade eight remote hub from St. Matthew Catholic Elementary School at the York Catholic District School Board would like to ask you. This year, we have been learning about coping strategies. We have been gathering them into our toolbox to help us navigate through almost two years of remote learning. Which tools do you use to help cope with the pressure of competing against the best in the world? Go Canada! Go Canada! Go Canada! Let's go, go Canada! Go Canada! <laughs> wow, that's a, that's a loaded question for you. Uh, you know, there's um, there's many tools. There's many different ways to go about it. Uh, something Fred said earlier uh, about focusing on the fun. Uh, that's actually a tool I use quite often to uh, distract myself from the pressures of trying to do what I've been training for. Uh, sometimes when you push yourself so hard and you have this big goal in front of your head and you're, you're standing in backstage and getting ready, it's like this over-encompassing, like, just like this massive pressure on your shoulders. And Sometimes taking a step back and remembering, it's like, oh, yeah, that's right. I like uh, this sport's supposed to be fun. Uh, you know, it's uh, it, it's something great and just powerful, you know. 
and then even with what you know it's like uh having friends and family uh to also distract you you know when you come home or like my wife and my child uh last year at world championships uh I, the pressure was getting to me. None of my tricks were work, working. None of my words, none of my strategies for dealing with pressure uh, were working. Uh, I had to skate really well to qualify two men for the 2022 Olympic Games. And I was, I was feeling the pressure. And so I, I had my earbuds in. And uh, instead of listening to music, I actually called home uh, to my wife and I was sitting backstage and I was nodding my head, pretending like I was listening to music. But in reality, I actually was talking to my wife on my phone call and just uh, just being able to hear her voice uh, calm me down. And I was like, oh, huh, that's right. There's uh, there's more to life than skating. And at the end of the day, this is just skating and I can go out here. I can have the fun, uh, like the best time of my life out here. And I can, you know, it's like, it's like, oh, that's right. I, I can do this. You know, it was it was just fantastic to be able to have that option to um, be able to call home and be like, oh, yeah, it's just skating. And uh, that pressure just lifted off my shoulders. I was able to go out and uh, skate my all time greatest program of all time, qualify two men for the Olympics and fantastic. And well, then I came home and, uh, you know, I took a small break from skating and my dad and I went up skiing uh, and it's just like here in Alaska, you know, I'm only 10 minutes away from the mountains over there. And sometimes when training gets super hard, you know, it just, it's all you're ever doing and it weighs on your shoulders. It, it comes, becomes super hard. And sometimes you got to get out. You have to take a small break. It doesn't necessarily have to um, take away from training, but you can use your weekend or any free time you have and, get outside, uh, go for a small hike or go for a long hike. And sometimes when you reach the top of a mountain or you reach a lookout and you realize that your, uh, your problems are pretty small in the grand th- scheme of things. And, uh, the world's a big place and full of wonder. And, uh, if you, sometimes it's the best healing to just get out and realize that your problems are pretty small in the grand scheme of things. And then it gives you a different look on life to be able to come back to reality and uh, attack your problems full like head on. Yeah. Well said, nothing like nature <laughs> to help you kind of reset. And oh, I, I love hope it. all the viewers are, uh, are also paying attention here as you gear up to watch the Paralympics when they kick off, you'll know now what some of those athletes are doing right before they compete. You'll know that sometimes when they have their earbuds in and are rocking out, they're actually just talking to family back home. So you've got the inside scoop here. Our last question comes from Miss Chubb's grade six class from Labrador Straits Academy in Newfoundland, and it's for Fred. So let's hear that question. Do you feel that if you made a mistake, people would judge you? Woo, that's a good question. Uh, short answer is yes. Uh, I actually often think about that, but it, uh, kind of just brings my point from earlier. Again, I try to just not focus on that and focus on, you know, what I can do and what I know about myself. And, you know, you kind of just think about what did I do in the past year? Let's say I barely saw uh, anyone, because I was just training, focusing on, you know, the big goal, which was the games and being prepared for it. And skiing on one leg is definitely hard. So I need to be very strong. So I've been in the gym, I was always on the mountain uh, training. So knowing that I put all this energy and all this time into uh, competing, no one knows more than me how like hard I train for this. And if I don't technically like do good at a race, um, whenever I'm like, oh, what will people like think of me? I often just go, I don't care because I know what I know about myself and I know what I did in the past year. So what I try to kind of focus on is just, um, yeah, what I can control and how I'm proud of myself. So not thinking or trying not to think about uh, what people's opinions will be, uh, with, you know, my performance or 
Um, so yeah, I kind of just uh, <laughs> try to focus on uh, the positive things that I think about myself and try to cut off anything negative that, that could come from the outside. So media or even like friends and family sometimes can say stuff that kind of just gets to you a little bit harder. And then you're thinking, oh, if they think that, what will like the world think of me? So um, it can be very, you know, it can come like quick at you, all these and like, I don't know, opinions and all these thoughts. And again, go back to meditation, like mindset and just focus on the moment, uh, you know, that little snowball or, you know, try to just focus on what you know and what you're proud of. And again, like if I bring back to what Keegan, I think said, we're just doing this for fun. So if it's not fun, I'm going to stop skiing. Right. So as long as I, as like, this is fun for me. I'm just going to keep on doing it and keep on training and keep on racing because if it's not fun, the games are supposed to be fun. They're literally called the games. So it's just games, fun and enjoy the moment. So for me, it's really kind of just bringing back to the same idea of I'm doing this for fun and for myself and whatever people think of me, I'll try to just cut that off and focus on what uh, I know about myself such great perspective you have there mm -hmm. and I think the really cool thing we're hearing here through all these themes that are coming together and and circling is you know Olympians are human too Olympians have self-doubt and Olympians face challenges but the really cool thing about all the athletes on this panel today is everyone has really great strategies to kind of help themselves get through these so if all of our listeners and viewers today can kind of take note of these and apply them to their own lives and reflect on maybe some of the things that work for you or don't work for you, it should help you as well as you try to persevere through your own challenges. Uh, so thanks to all the classrooms that have sent in their questions. It was, it's, it's been great to hear from you. And we do now have some time to take a few questions from our audience. So I will uh, read a few questions that come and I'll throw them out to you athletes. Um, Tyler, the first one's for you. Have you ever been <laughs> super scared? Um, it's an interesting question for me because my goal in life is to be super scared. I, I love being super scared. Um, I, <laughs> the sports that I pursue, um, you know, it, the goal of it is to test the limits and test the boundaries and, um, snowboarding is no different going as fast as you can, uh, close to three other racers. It's, it's scary. It's just generally scary. And, um, that's one of the things in, in the gate that I have to deal with, um, is the nerves of, you know, we're about to go 60, 70 kilometers an hour, one inch away from each other off jump and through corners. And so, yeah, I, I get scared, but, um, like I said, I, I love being scared and I, I love to use that to, um, you know, just propel myself forward and, and push myself further. And, the best part about being scared is overcoming that fear. And um, once you overcome that fear, it just puts you up to that next level. And now scared is here. So you want to overcome that. And now scared is here. And if, if you just keep pursuing that and become, get comfortable being uncomfortable, um, then you can just keep stepping to the next level every time. And um, what's really scary for you uh, or what's really scary for someone else is just normal for you. And, and then just, keep trying to push that level higher and higher and that's what I love about the sports that I do wow I think I think a lot of winter Olympians uh do a lot of scary things so <laughs> I don't think you're alone there um and always pushing the limits fantastic uh let's go to uh Keegan for this one what does it feel like oh sorry this is for Jocelyn <laughs> for sure this is not for Keegan <laughs> what does it feel like before you start an Olympic hockey game what are those feelings and emotions like <laughs> um there's a ton of emotions feelings um you know being nervous is is super natural and and normal um and you know when when you're nervous about anything it to me it and I mean it should be to you like it means that you care and it's something that you know you're you're passionate about and that you love doing so I I, 
I actually get excited when I get nervous. Um, but with being nervous, you also have to like control your emotions. So what I try to do is like do some deep breathing, um, try to calm myself down. So I'm not, you know, too excited and everything's kind of jittery. So um, I'd say before, you know, an Olympic hockey game, I try to calm myself down so that my nerves, um, I actually can use them um, as good and it doesn't get me like too excited and, and jittery. But um, it's always a ton of fun. And, and, you know, that's why I train it. So it's, it's, it's exciting. And, uh, but yeah, nervous is, is good if you can um, calm yourself down. Yeah, I bet it's a fine line between, you know, over nervous and under nervous. And I bet of Keegan, course. you'd be very <laughs> nervous if you were at an Olympic hockey game. <laughs> oh, actually, I would be. Uh, I'd have a big smile on my face. That that would just sound like a blast, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll go to the next question here. Question for Fred: How do you get through so much pressure? I don't know. Honestly, I try to not have any pressure on myself, but it is hard. Um, let's say with, you know, everyone at home supporting you, that's one thing, but then you add sponsors to that and that's another pressure. And then you add media and that's another pressure. And then, you know, all of your following. So it can be huge sometimes. And um, I'm not sure yet how I do it because <laughs> This is kind of new to me where I kind of think about this entire pressure, but uh, I try to just, again, go back to the basics, which is just what I know. And, um, you know, just focusing on breathing, where I am, the snow and the fun. So, again, cannot stress that enough. The fun that you have when you're competing, when you're at the games or at a big competition that's when, um, you know, the best comes out of you because you're not thinking about anything else. So, um, yeah, I think it's good to notice that there's a pressure because it's fun to know that there's so many people supporting you and caring about whatever you do, but it is sometimes a bit overwhelming. So noticing that and kind of just transforming it into that energy uh, of people that actually want you to have fun. They don't want you, you know, absolutely to succeed. They don't to just want what's best for you and they wouldn't want you to you know feel overwhelmed or stressed out or you know feeling that pressure in a negative way it should be transformed into positive so definitely kind of just focus on they just care about what i do because they're impressed or whatever the reason why they care about what i do but it's good and it's not negative they don't want to see me fail so they want to see me have fun and enjoy what i do and therefore, that's what I'm going to do. So I try to just kind of flip that pressure that would be negative into something positive. Yeah, I sometimes think, you know, high level athletes put more pressure on themselves than than anyone else does. But uh, I know Canada watching all of you at the Olympic Games and the Paralympic Games has been, you know, so excited and is so excited and proud of you already. So um, it's, it's well said, Fred. I think we maybe have time for another question here. So we'll go to Keegan. How do you handle it when you don't do as well as you maybe would have liked to? Oh, that's a, that's a great one. Uh, you know, you're having such high expectations for yourself is great. And then, you know, it, it's pretty hard to meet some of those high expectations when you have so many difficult elements that you're trying to do. Your competition is so tough and ever evolving. And, you know, it was the strongest here in Beijing. The men's field was the strongest it's been in the history of men's figure skating. So, you know, it's like, how do I handle not doing as well as I've liked? You know, it's, uh, it's you know, it's really, uh, you come home that much more, uh, what do you call it? Motivated. Uh, because uh, honestly, if you come home upset, you, you know, we're, we're all human. We, we have human emotions. And when, especially when it's your fault and you, you know that you could have done better, we want to skate as best as we can. We want to compete as good as we can. And so we come home with that much more motivation. We hit the ice running when we come home and we work and we work hard and we, we push ourselves even harder because we don't want that to ever happen again. We want to put so much work in that no matter what happens at a competition, we won't, uh, 
we, we never want to feel that way again. So we, we come home that much more motivated to just try to hit the ground running and put the work in so we don't have to feel that way. Yeah, that's, that's again, very well said. Um, I think we've just about wrapped up our time here. So I want to congratulate Keegan and Jocelyn and wish the best of luck to Fred and Tyler. Uh, what an amazing discussion today. Thank you guys all so much for contributing. And a big thanks to all of our champions who tuned in to watch today. We hope that everyone who joined in um, enjoyed the experience and learned some really valuable lessons. There's a ton you can take from this and apply to your own life. So thank you all and take care. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.